There's a little football event that's going on right now, and you may have heard of it. It's called the World Cup, or something along those lines. Anyway, there's a chance that the passion, drama and excitement of arguably the greatest competition in sport doesn't do it for you. If that's the case though, don't worry. I've got you covered. I've decided to take a look at what I think are the five best football games for those who hate, or are merely indifferent to, the sport. Number 5 Let's start with the recent title, Nintendo Pocket Football Club. Released on the 3DS's eShop in April this year, it's a game that looks to make the sport accessible to all, and although it's not a complete success, it's at least an admirable attempt. Football management sims are great for those who care, but their realms of options and endless pages of text just aren't that exciting for those not entranced by the unseen depths of the beautiful game. I'm a football fan and even I get a little overwhelmed with all the text these titles fling around. Pocket Football Club is a little different in that it takes a pared down and quite lovable approach to the sport, making you create a team from scratch and then seeing how they cope by watching full-scale matches. There are cards to collect to improve your squad, and there's an enjoyably light-hearted sense of humour present throughout. It may not be a truly exhilarating experience, the rinky-dink visuals are lovely, but they can't stop the concept getting a little dull before too long, but this is a game that's clearly had a lot of love poured into it, and is worth investigating as a result, even if you're not a football fanatic. Number 4 It would be somewhat churlish to ignore smartphones and the many football games they've spewed out in recent years, especially as many of them are actually top draw. The one I'll plump for here is an older one though, Flick Kick Football, released by Pickpock way back in 2010. Its main strength lays in its simplicity, and can therefore be enjoyed by all. There's a football, there's a goalkeeper and players to kick your ball around. You kick the ball by drawing a line on the screen, adding bend to your shots when necessary. You either miss and it's game over, or you score and move on to the next stage. You can gain a maximum of three continues by making the ball arc in as close to the woodwork as possible, but that's effectively all there is to it, and it's a joyously addictive and effective formula. The sequel, Flick Kick Football Legends, is the more fleshed out experience, but from what I've played it flashes ad after ad in your face, which is a pity, otherwise it'd be the far superior title. The only real way the core concept could be improved is by adding some Alan Partridge commentary. Traction engine. Eat my goal. Perhaps that can come in a future update. Well, in an ideal world, anyway. I will add that there are a few more light-hearted football games on smartphones that come recommended as well, namely New Star Soccer, Score Classic Goals, and Soccer Moves. Number 3 There are a lot of Game Boy football titles, and almost all are either unplayable or glitch-ridden but one game that stands head and shoulders above the rest is Nintendo World Cup. For many reasons, and not all of them, good ones. Also released on the NES, this was one of Nintendo's first ventures into the sport, and it's a surreal experience that leaves an impression on all that play it. It certainly makes soccer, also released on the NES by Nintendo, look even duller, which is no easy task. Designed by Technos, the team behind enjoyable NES brawler River City Ransom, the game uses similar sprites from the developer's previous titles, and ends up concocting a take on football that feels like almost no other. Largely as it feels very little like actual football. Teams are six aside and you control one player primarily, although you can make your teammates perform tackles, passes and barges on command. Yes, you heard me right, you can barge people over in this, and receive no penalty for doing so. You won't get more memorable moments per second in almost any other game, and a large part of this is due to the AI. Players falling over for no reason, nonsensical defending, glitching sprites, goal line scrambles, illogical attacks and crazy shots, they're all here. Whereas some football games are just broken full stop, Nintendo World Cup always feels like it's on the cusp of falling apart, but is just about holding itself together all the time, sometimes by only the thinnest of threads. Still, it's a recipe that works, and can be embraced by anyone, football fan or not, but does feel like it needs just an extra layer of polish to become the finished article. Number 2. And here it is, the finished article. Or should I say articles, as I'll cheat and include two games for my second spot, but in my defence they're very similar. They are of course Mario Smash Football for the GameCube and Mario Strikers Charged Football for the Wii. My reason for putting both on this list is that I really don't think one is definitively better than the other. They have the exact same concept with teams consisting of characters including Mario, Donkey Kong, Yoshi and Luigi, basically knocking seven bells out of each other within confined cage pitches. 
Like Nintendo World Cup, this isn't really football in any sense, which is what makes it so much fun, and perfect for those with no interest in the sport. Unlike Nintendo World Cup though, these two games are much larger in scale and ambition, with significantly more single player and multiplayer modes. Playing these games with friends is where they really come alive too. Matches are also enlivened by a range of weapons, environmental hazards, and the ability to score super or mega strikes, which if performed correctly bag you multiple goals. The Wii version even gives individual characters their own powers, only adding to the chaos. I will say these games are far from perfect though, they offer little for those who want any time to think, and are a little too hyperactive at times. They both employ a gritty art direction that is ambitious but sometimes a little amusing too. Making effectively lovable characters like Yoshi and Daisy seem like common street thugs is not an easy task after all. If pushed, I'd say I personally prefer the GameCube game slightly by the way, as it has a more pared down approach than Mario Strikers Charged Football, which mercilessly chucks everything at you and feels a little overbearing as a result, although it definitely has the superior title screen music. I'll also add that Sega Soccer Slam is a similar title, and was actually released before both of these games, but I feel it lacks the charm and polish of Nintendo's attempts in this uncrowded football subgenre. And number one is... Ok, forget Romeo, Montague, Banquo, whatever his kids names are. The game that gets top spot on this list is the finest thing David Beckham has ever helped give birth to. Go Go Beckham Adventure on Soccer Island is a 2D platformer for the Game Boy Advance that was only released in Europe, and single handedly helps vanquish the horror of David Beckham's soccer released on the same format. You play as, surprise surprise, Bex himself, or at least a very cutesy cartoon version of him, and are tasked with getting a football to the end of linear stages and then wellying the black and white sphere into a goal. Or a, a hoop, in this case. Throughout the levels you must manoeuvre around various foes and obstacles, with your ball your only weapon against them. Now it's worth saying that this idea had kind of already been attempted in Soccer Kid and Marco's Magic Football, released in 1993 and 1994 respectively, but where those titles failed this game from developer Denki succeeds. This is largely as enough thought has gone into making sure the strange concept is fun to play, and not frustrating. Whereas in those two aforementioned titles you never felt completely in control of the ball, with levels being a little too busy, Go Go Beckham makes sure not to overwhelm, with stages being relatively small and simple in design. Yes, it can feel a little sparse at times, but it's a necessary evil to make sure things never get overcomplicated. Add in some unlockable abilities, power-ups, and some entertaining bosses, and you have a game that really does feel like a labour of love, and not just a shameless attempt to cash in on the Beckham name. Yes, it's probably a little too adorable for some people, but that's par for the course from Denki, and I for one love how the game is presented. Don't let the sugary visuals fool you either, it's a tough game at times, especially if you want to collect all the various trinkets in each stage. So yes, Go Go Beckham is well worth having a kick about with, whether you like football or not. Now if you don't mind, I'm going to go watch what is shaping up to be possibly the best World Cup since 1970. Thanks for watching. France are keeping the passes flowing well.